Shalom, welcome. Uh, let's uh, let's get to it. So we've got four weeks done of the sin of fear. So this is part five. All right. Now you need to understand there is a time coming, time that was predicted within the scripture, a time that uh, we refer to as the time of Jacob's trouble, a time of great depression. Uh, the Lord Yeshua spoke about it. And we're not going to get, you know, into the series on uh, the time of Jacob's trouble. But we, what we want you to understand that what we are ministering right now is preparation for that time. Okay, preparation, getting ready to go through. There's, there's, it's going to be a time that's the that's the worst time that this world has seen or ever will see, and we are going to see those times. <clears throat> but within that. Don't get into fear. Understand that the Lord God is still on the throne. He's still in control of all of it. He will do exactly what he promised that he will do through it all uh, for us if we do exactly what he tells us we must do. Okay. Uh, when it comes to this thing of fear, it's important for each and every one of us to understand that the only fear that we need to have is the fear of the Lord God himself. All right. The, uh, the fear of the fact of not understanding. Why wouldn't you have understanding? Because you didn't seek him. You didn't do his will. You didn't please the father as the scripture tells us to do. So then you would be lacking understanding. All right. And <clears throat> when that time comes, understand this is why preparation is so important. When that time comes, it's going to be too late to try and seek that understanding out. So now that we have the good times, the times where you are making money and you have free time, as we call it, is the time to invest that time into preparation, whether the, you know, the preparation of getting a relationship with God, the preparation of uh, building the time, pleasing him, putting in the time, and the physical preparation, putting away food, putting away uh, gold and silver. All right, so we are preparing ourselves to, to know that God is on the throne and that he's going to do everything that he said he was going to do. Actually, it's already done. He's already done his part. It's already placed. We just got to walk through it. And it's going to be exciting. And I realize that there's going to be some things within it that are going to be horrible. Um, as far as this world's view of it is going to be, it's going to, it's going to be the most terrible thing that they have ever seen, that they have ever looked at. We as the children of God, we're going to stand. And we're going to know. All right? If you know what's coming, then you have the opportunity to prepare, right? And if you don't, then it will come upon you. <clears throat> These times that we're about to enter into, it's all up to the Father. Uh, if you if you remember the twenty fourth chapter of Matthew, you know they asked they asked Yeshua about the times, right? <clears throat> and he said, "I don't know. It's in the hands of the Father. It's in the hands of the Father." So what you and I have to understand is we need to get ourselves ready. We need to watch. Scripture tells us to watch. Because we don't know the day. We don't know the day. I can tell you pretty confidently, I don't believe it's tomorrow. But I don't know the day. Now, that's just my own confidence with what I believe. I could be wrong, right? But there's certain things that have to be fulfilled in Scripture before everything can happen. That's the point, right? So... You can follow the signs, you can look, and you can see and understand the time that's coming. The things that the prophets prophesied within scripture, telling us about this time that's coming. And that's what we're doing. We're, we're taking the things that the prophets told us, the things that have come to pass, the things that have yet to come to pass, and we're putting these things together so that you will have the information to walk through what's coming. <clears throat> because it's that information that's going to save your life. And that's going to save the life of your family and the friends and the people around you. All right. Isaiah 30, the first verse. That's where we're going to start as far as scripture goes. It says, woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. And that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. So it's important that we cover ourselves with the spirit of God. 
Now, who are these people that he's talking about that have taken counsel in a different way? Well, we can talk about all the different kinds of religions out here. All right. Um, they, as a whole, are not going to come in. They're not going to be open. They're not going to be teachable to the things of God. That's not saying, you know, one individual can't convert. <clears throat> so these people that he's talking about that walk down or walk to go down to Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore, shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan. And his ambassadors came to Haines. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be an help for profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beasts of the south and to the land of trouble and anguish, from whence comes the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent. They will carry their riches upon the shoulders of the young asses and their treasures upon the bunches of camels to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore, I have cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. So what's your strength? It's to sit still. That's your strength. Okay, understand that. Put that, put that in a, a, a note somewhere, whether mental, physical, whatever. Note, note that. Um. Uh, realizing that moving forward things are going to wax worse they're going to wax worse it's not going to be easy to sit still it's not going to be comfortable right we sit we sit still better when we're comfortable uh it's not it's not going to be comfortable you're going to have to understand what it is to trust in in the lord god you're going to have to understand that for yourself if we are his children then he is obligated by his covenant by his contract that he made with us he made the covenant Okay, his, to his children to watch over us, to keep us. And nothing, nothing can harm us in any way. That's the promise of God. So as the prophet writing this begins to lay out, he's saying, look, Egypt couldn't help you with all its riches and power and whatever. You know, you went there, you got away from the Lord God. Now go. Eighth verse, all right, Isaiah 30, verse 8. Now go, write it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. In other words, write this down. Make sure that God's people can understand. Put your trust in the Lord God. Don't put your trust in this world, right? There's no army. There's no country. There's no whatever that can save you. It's in the Lord God. This world will let you down. This world has let generation after generation after generation down. The governments of this world are not interested in helping you. They're not interested in the people. They never have been. Okay, it's not something new. <clears throat> Ninth verse says, this is a rebellious people, lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. What was the problem? They wouldn't listen to the law, right? God's instructions on how we're to live. They wouldn't listen. And that was, the, that was what he was upset about. Excuse me. And what's the church teach? Well, the law, we don't need that. We don't need the law. We don't have God's rules. You know, go ahead and do what you want to do. Live like the devil and, and, uh, God will still love you. It's still okay. No, that's not, what, that's not what the Bible instructs us. All right. So, so yeah, we have the church out here believing that the law is a strange thing. So how exactly are we going to get past that? How are we going to, you know, move forward with all these people out there that believe, well, <laughs> that's something we don't have to worry about. Okay. He's going to get it done by his spirit. God's got that in his control all right he's getting it into the hearts of people that are truly the people that he's calling out truly his children uh israel ephraim and that's how it's going to work he's going to take care of it see this how this works doesn't make sense to us and should it really is it is you know is it our business to know everything that god does and how he does it 
All we got to know is what we got to do and what we don't got to do. <laughs> All right. That's what we need to know because the things that uh, we get done are commissioned to us by God. And if God's going to give you something to do, understand this, he's going to give you the, pro the provision to get it done. Okay. He's going to give you the things necessary to get it done. It's by his spirit that it's accomplished. It's not by our might. It's not by our power. It sure isn't by our money. All right. But we, we already have, I mean, through what we've, you know, or what he's done, not, not we, it's through what he's done. There's people we have around the world, people in places, people are beginning to hear the very depths of their hearts. That's where they're hearing it. All right. To understand that we've got a hold of something here. We've got a hold of something that goes far beyond things that you can just see. Things that you can just, all right. We walked into the depths, the very depths of the will of God. Tenth verse. Still talking about this group of people. <clears throat> which say to the seers, see not, you know, don't see, don't, don't, don't do that. Which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceit. So this group of people is saying, you know, we don't want you to, to see the truth. Just tell us everything's going to be okay. Just, just, you know, we don't want to know what, it's scary. It's so just, so just lie to us. That's what this people is, is looking for. And that's exactly what's going on in this generation right now. All right. Because what you're seeing in the big time ministries, the big time uh, people on whatever channel, the internet. Everything's going to be okay. You know, this, this, this is going on, but you know, whatever, whatever. They're not, they're not telling you the same things that we've been saying okay it's a, you know why because that wouldn't get them their money that wouldn't get them attention that wouldn't draw the people in and get them excited but god's word isn't about being excited all right that's not what it's about it's meant to prepare you and i for the times that are coming to the face of this earth okay but what do the people want they want comfort. Everybody's in their little bubble of comfort. They want to stay in there. They don't want anything to, to rock their little boat. Everything's got to be. They want to hear smooth things. They want they want uh, people to hear. They want to hear, well, this is, you know, this is going to be a great year, right? This is a prosperous year. This will be a booming year. Everything will work out for you. You'll get more money in your job. That's what they want to hear. That's what people want to hear, right? That's not the case. That's not what God is saying. All right. So so these people that we're talking about, these seers and these these prophets that would be swayed in this way, they would be drawing people off in a different direction. And that would keep those people from coming into where God wants them. All right. So, yeah, you can see that that is happening on the face of the earth right now. All right. No. Right now, God is gathering the 10 lost tribes of Israel, his children. All right. That's what God is doing. That's what's important in the eyes of God this time and this hour to gather those. All right. This is, this is the last and one of the greatest moves of God that there have ever been on the face of this earth. You have the opportunity to walk in. You have that opportunity. These people that are drawing crowds because they walk around and they give you a word of knowledge. Oh, I see this for your life, brother. I see this for your life, sister. No, that's not. Can God do that? Yeah, God can do that. But does he base ministries off? No. That's about what people want to hear. That's about feelings, wanting to feel good. Verse 11. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One to cease from before us. So this is, again, that group of people talking to the uh, prophets, as we were discussing there saying, uh, you know, change the path, cause the Holy One of, you know, God to, to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this world and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon, 
Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And he shall break it as the breaking of a potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare, so that there shall not be found in the bursting of a, a shirt to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And ye would not. Ye would not. You refused. You, you just wouldn't listen. Right? He's saying, look, this didn't have to happen. But it did because you wouldn't understand. You refused to sit in peace. You didn't have any confidence in my holy covenant. So this is what happened. But he said, no, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee. And we will ride in, in, upon the swift. Therefore, they that pursue you shall be swift. One thousand shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall ye flee. Till ye be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain as and as an ensign on an hill and therefore the the lord will wait that he may be gracious unto you and therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you for the lord is a god of judgment blessed are they that wait for him blessed are they that wait for him for the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shall weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear it, he will answer thee. And though the Lord give ye the bread of adversity and the water of, a, of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed to a corner any more. What thine eyes shall see, thy teachers. All right. So, so. Yeah, we're going to see the bread of affliction said right there, right? We're going to see the water, the bread of adversity, sorry, and the water of affliction. But we, but we now have people in place to teach, to bring out the truth, the depths, to, to prepare ourselves, all right? And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. And when you turn to the right hand, uh, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. All right. So so we're here. We have heard. It's not by mistake that you're that you're hearing this this day. It's not a mistake. We are being guided. We're being good, guided in a most divine way. Glory be to God that you have ears to hear that you that, you know, for his guidance. God is good. All right. And we and we don't ever want to forget he's with you. Don't forget that he's with you. He's in you. He, he guides you so well, so well. That he said he wouldn't even let your foot slip. All right. If if, if you'll just have peace. And stay quiet before him. Don't run because everybody's running, you know, because the world is running. Hey, this world's going to run. They're going to run. You've been given ears to, uh, to hear and eyes to see for this hour, for this day, for this hour. And, and praise, praise the Lord God for choosing. I absolutely praise him for choosing you. Some, hey, sometimes it's hard to see that as a blessing. <laughs> he chose me to, to be here now to see all this. Like That can be hard to see uh, as a blessing. And I, yeah, I know. But God is bringing it forth. He knows the end from the beginning. And we're told. You know, we were told, we were warned, you had, we, you know, whatever time amount of, of life you've spent, you've had the time to look in to see what's coming, to understand. And they're coming now in a way like we've never seen before. But remember, you have authority over the storms. You have the authority. Peace, be still. Trust, trust in the Lord God. Trust in the Lord our God, right? And those types of things, you know, you don't, 
Fortunately, we weren't taught that sitting in the pews as children, okay? <laughs> there are things that you find out about where when you read your Bible. Oh, look what, look, that's in there. It says we have this authority. But what, what, and how can I prove that? What did Yeshua say? All that I have done, ye shall do. And he goes on and says, and even greater things could be greater than what Yeshua has done, right? Imagine being in that kind of a position. Now, when you read through the book of Acts, you, you realize it wasn't a strange thing for these great things to happen. It wasn't, that, that didn't seem so strange then. And I'll tell you, it won't be strange in the times coming. But you have to learn to operate in a God kind of faith. Go to Isaiah 33. We'll start in the first verse. Isaiah 33, 1. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and dealest treacherously, treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou shalt cease to spoil, then thou shalt be spoiled. And what, when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with thee. O Lord, be gracious unto us. That's a prayer, right? O Lord, be gracious unto us. We have waited for thee. Be thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the time of trouble. Now, this, this here isn't necessarily talking particularly about the time of Jacob's trouble, but it's, it's talking about the time of your trouble, your, your personal trouble. And, and hey, we all have times of trouble that we come to. Third verse says, at the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of, of thyself, the nations were scattered. And your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of a caterpillar as the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. The Lord is exalted for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. The wisdom and knowledge or sorry and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. There we go. Another one of those things you need to mark in your heart, mark in your book, mark somewhere. Understand that wisdom and knowledge will be the stability. It's not going to be guns. It's not going to be money. It's not going to be how strong you are, how many people you got around you. It's wisdom and knowledge. And then it goes on to say, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Fear of the Lord is his treasure. That's a pretty strong word when you really stop and think about it. Behold, their valiant ones shall cry without. The ambassadors of peace shall weep bitterly. The highways lie waste. The wayfaring man ceaseth. He hath broken the covenant. Again, what was, this, what was the problem here? They had broken the covenant. He hath despised the cities. He regardeth no man. The earth mourneth and languisheth. Lebanon is ashamed and hewn down. Sharon is like a wilderness, and Bashan and Carmel shake off their fruits. Now I will rise, saith the Lord. Now I will be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. Ye shall conceive chaff. Ye shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime, as thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. Hear ye that are afar off what I have done. And ye that are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners of Zion are afraid. Fearfulness, uh, fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burn burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despises the gain of oppressions that shakes his hands from holding of bribes, that stops his ears from the hearing of blood and shuts his eyes from seeing evil. These are the ones that are going to walk through uh, this thing with the protection and the leadership of God himself. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. We have nothing to hold us back. We are the chosen of the Lord God. You and I have been chosen. 
be peaceful within it all. All right. And in, in time, God will, will use you to do whatever he needs to do, move you on the palm board as he needs to move you and bring people forth. All right. But the leaders have to know what they have to do, right? They have to get in a position to know what they have to do, right? It's about teaching each and every one of us how to lead, okay? How to be fearless in the name of our God. 16 says, he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him, and his waters shall be sure, right? So there'll be food, there'll be water. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. All right. Like I said, water to, water to drink, bread to eat, but you have to prepare. Prepare, prepare, prepare. If you don't put up food for the hard times, you know, hey, it could be the plagues coming. It could be storms that roll through your area. Uh, it could be the fall of money and you... <clears throat> You don't, you don't have any money to buy food, but you didn't have anything, right? Whatever it is that comes, you'll have, the, you'll have it there. You're already prepared for it. You're already ready for it. And God's going to hide you away. So, yeah, we're going to see times where people are going door to door rummaging. You know, so I've, heard, I've heard that from people. Well, the people will just come and steal it. and God's going to hide you away. You, get, you walk with God and... They'll be walking down the street, going by your house and going, I, I think we already got it. Let's not even bother with that house. I think we already got it. Or not see your house. He's going to hide you away. He's, you'll be under his wings. They'll walk right by your house and they won't even know why. That's how real God's protection is. If, if you have peace, right? If we follow the instructions of what we, we read today in his scripture, if you have peace, if you wait upon him, don't panic. The Lord God will take care of you. Uh, remember the story of Peter walking on the water, right? Uh, he sees Yeshua walking on the water. And uh, Yeshua told him, be not afraid. It's me. And Peter says, well, if it's you, if, if that's you, then come bid me that, that, I, that I come out there. And so what did Yeshua do? Uh, you know, Peter spoke that he had the faith to do it. So the Lord says, come on. Come on, Peter. Come on out. So Peter gets out of the boat, he walks over to him, and everything's fine until Peter gets his eyes on circumstances, all right? Circumstances. He looks around, starts thinking about, <laughs> okay, <laughs> and then whoop, down he goes. Now, here, here's the part I love about it. So he, he does well, makes a mistake, and what's it say? Immediately. The Lord reached down and lifted him up immediately. I love that. And, and it, that situation, that situational, you know, circumstance viewing is what gets us all in trouble. Because we get our eyes on it, we get our hearts on it, we get our minds on it. And it takes us away, takes our eyes off the Lord, right? And that's the way it works. It gets us in trouble. It always has, it always will. All right. It's, it's the Lord God that we need to be focused on. It's his covenant that he made with us that we need to be focused on. He's the one that made it. it wasn't us. It wasn't our deal. We signed it by saying, amen, we will do that. All right, read where they're at the, at the bottom of the mountain. And they said, all that, you, all that he has said, we will do. All right? Now he's telling us, be at peace. Be at peace and know that the Lord God is going to save you out of your time of trouble. No matter what the trouble is, no matter when it takes place, God's going to save you in your time of trouble, you and your family. All right, so get the basics. Learn to fast, learn to pray, learn to, to, to study God's holy word. And know that as you're learning, okay, as you learn to fast, as you learn to pray, as you learn to study day and night, all right? Whenever you have time, whenever you have time, because as you're doing that, those things are getting instilled within you. They're becoming a part of you. You're becoming a part of it. They're getting uh, instilled with your spirit, man. They're going to reach the very depths of your heart. 
And those are the things that are going to sustain you in the times that lie ahead. For the world, it's going to be pure hell. Absolute hell. But you and I, we're going to survive this thing. God's going to show, show us the way thereby to escape. All right? This is our day. This is our hour. God chose us to be here now. How did the apostles know it was their time? You know, they just knew, didn't they? they? Just like you know in your heart. You know now. <clears throat> and that's the way God does things, right? God holds the whole of this in his hands, right? He knows where we should be. He knows what we should be doing every day. He, he has angels around you. He has angels around me. They are there. Their, their job is to watch over you, to keep you, to guide you. The problem is, you know, we forget about those things. We don't think about those things in our day to day. We, we feel alone, right? But they can't do anything for you if you're out breaking the covenant, if you're out breaking the agreement with God. If you get into fear, they can't do anything for you. All right. So, we we are able to wander off the path, aren't we? Yeah. And we can do it so easily. So easily. But God hasn't chosen for you to wander off the path. That's not what he's chosen for. He has chosen for you to make it all the way to the end. You're going to be safe through this. If you have peace inside yourself. All right, if you will stand still, be quiet, and rely upon the Lord our God.